Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Final Fantasy Bestiary. This series is dedicated towards discovering the history and lore behind Final Fantasy's most iconic creatures and characters. This episode, we are looking at the Aramon. The Aramon is a creature that has frequented Final Fantasy games since its introduction early in the series. It draws its inspiration from a creature of the same name from an old Middle Eastern hypostasis. That description of the Aramon is that it is a destructive spirit, which can be somewhat compared to their equivalent of the devil. The stories told of him vary depending on the source, but the Aramon's other name, Angramanyu, actually means destructive or angry spirit and is at constant war with Spentamanyu, his twin brother, who represents a good or holy spirit. Some of these aspects do seem to influence the appearance of the Aramon in Final Fantasy. It is a winged beast with no arms, a devilish tail, and small imp-like legs attached to a small ball of an abdomen. On its body, it possesses spikes down its back, a large mouth filled with sharp teeth, and one giant eye. This eye is often its weapon of choice, as it's shown the ability to fire lasers out of it, perform gaze-like attacks that cause serious status effects such as petrification, and cast powerful magics. Its sharp teeth and open mouth are also used for attacks on occasion, such as bites or ear-shattering screeches, sometimes breath attacks. In almost all instances, this mouth also appears to be smiling, almost as if the Aramon takes joy in the pain that it causes to its victims. Often, the Aramon is quite a powerful, normal enemy, but in its first appearance in Final Fantasy III, it was actually one of the final bosses of the game. The Aramon was one of the four guardians within the World of Darkness, the Aramon specifically protecting the Dark Earth Crystal. He had powerful magic attacks, and his physical attacks could petrify on hit. While nothing more is said about the Aramon, the same Aramon would appear in other titles in the Final Fantasy series, including Final Fantasy 1 The Dawn of Souls version, Final Fantasy 4 The After Years, and Final Fantasy 14 A Realm Reborn. All of these instances are direct reference to the original appearance in Final Fantasy 3. In the case of Final Fantasy XIV, the Crystal Tower and the World of Darkness appear as raids, and as such, it was only natural that the Aramon would make his appearance, though he is under the name of Angromanyu. Fitting, considering that Angromanyu was actually sealed away in a World of Darkness at one point in that history I mentioned before. Outside of the instances mentioned early on, the Aramon would appear in most games as a common enemy, usually with multiple versions. Final Fantasy IV features several very weak versions of the Aramon early on, though there is a boss called the Plague Horror guarding the Holy Lance near the end of the game. A similar thing happens in Final Fantasy VI, where Aramon appears as normal enemies throughout the game, and a boss named Plague guards Realm's ultimate weapon. It even shares the same attack pattern as its Final Fantasy IV counterpart. From that point on, Aramon would continue alternating between having a weak early game version, strong late game versions, and the occasional boss. Final Fantasy VII didn't introduce Aramon until the final dungeon of the game, where it showed the ability to kill anyone whose level was a multiple of four. In Final Fantasy IX, the enemy appears towards the end of the game as well, showcasing deadly instant death and game over causing spells galore. Final Fantasy X had Aramon of all types, from some of the weakest mobs in the game to an optional super boss in the monster arena called the One Eye. Though it's one of the weakest super bosses in the game, it can still decimate less prepared parties in an instant. And while it was no Arimon, Angramanyu does appear in Final Fantasy X-2 as an optional super boss in the Bikanel Desert. Final Fantasy XI introduced Arimon as members of the Demon Family, closely assisting the Shadow Lord and sometimes commanding legions of demons. One such Arimon, Angramanyu, appears in the Dreamworld Dynamis as one of the Dynamis Lord's most powerful generals. Despite this, outside of a single mission early on in the game where an Aramon summons a Shadow Dragon, there are generally just deadly demons with high-level magics and gaze attacks. Now, Final Fantasy XII would see the Aramon in an odd form, that of a ghost instead of a one-eyed flying beast. It was an early game boss located in the Sochen Cave Palace. Now, despite being a ghost in the game, the Aramon does still retain one aspect of its original appearance, the eye. If you look in the center of its chest, you can see an eye. This ghost is the only ghost in the game to have this quality, so it's no doubt a reference to the Aramon's regular appearance. In Final Fantasy XIII, while the Aramon would go back to its wing, sharp teeth, and one eye, it would also be given a full body and what appears to be a cloth with another single eye embroidered onto it. This is one of the weakest enemies in the game, though there are stronger versions of this enemy type, though they go under different names. And of course, you have Final Fantasy XIV. We already mentioned Angramanyu before and his appearance in the World of Darkness, but normal Aramon are actually quite a common creature. 
They are what is known as a Void Scent, a creature believed to be summoned to Eorzea from the dark world known as the Void. The Aramon are a middle to high ranking Void Scent according to Eorzean studies on the Void Scent. Out of the 12 ranks, with number 1 being the highest and the rightful spot to the Cloud of Darkness, the Aramon usually appear around the 4th or 5th rank, depending on their species within the genus. Additionally, players are able to obtain an Aramon as a mount for subscribing to the game for 3 months in total, while also receiving the BDI minion, which takes on the appearance of Final Fantasy's more old school Aramon. Outside of the main numbered games, the Aramon is of course common in all of the series off titles as well. It's just one of those enemies you expect to see in a Final Fantasy game, a trait that's pretty common here in this series. We will wait for the appearance for it in Final Fantasy XV and see what Square Enix can cook up with them next. I eventually wouldn't mind seeing an Aramon play an important role in the series at some point either. It is a demon, it could play tricks and stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Final Fantasy Bestiary. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and be sure to stay tuned for more bestiaries on this channel. Anyway, thank you again, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.